Hi there and welcome to my channel. I started this basically as a place to talk about plants and show my plants without annoying my friends and family too much. They've all gotten quite sick of everything that I show them and everything that I tell them about my plants, so I figured might as well document it here instead. Today I'm going to be going through all of my house plants, starting from the longest I've had them to my most recent purchases. These are all very low maintenance and kind of tolerant with any sort of light conditions plants. I'm not a very fussy person and I can't really deal with fussy plants. So these are all easy to care for and kind of just some of my favorites. So let's hop into it. So the plant that I've had the longest is my golden pothos. And I got this from just a little three leaf cutting and it's about almost a year old. And it's not growing super fast at the moment just because it's very dark where I am right now. Um, dark and cold and I've kind of put him into a little corner so he's not growing super fast. He has a new leaf coming in here but he's just getting very viney. Um, but he's, I, I ignore him. I don't really do anything with him. Um, I just clean his leaves like once every other week and just give him a water when his leaves get droopy but I'm so pretty. He's just so, so nice. Um, I do think that it would be helpful to you know, kind of chop him up on his vines a bit and kind of fill out the pot because as you can see, the pot isn't super full itself. Um, but he's starting to trail and I love it. So this is my oldest one and he's the one that kind of started it all. The next plant is my Brazil philodendron and I got him from Lowe's, just one of those little tiny four inch pots. And he's still in a four inch, but what I did is I had him in a six inch pot because I got him right at the start of my whole plant hoarding and he was in a four inch pot and I thought oh my gosh he's kind of coming out the top a bit too much kind of overflowing he needs a bigger pot which was not the case and I didn't really know anything about you know root bound or just you know having pots too big for plants and that sort of stuff so I potted him in a six inch shortly after I got him and he was not happy he wasn't dying necessarily but he just was not growing so what I did is I split him up into two separate four inch pots and he just took off. He literally started up here and in less than a year, he's all the way down here. So he's definitely one of my fastest growers. And I literally, he's been so easy. I haven't had any issues with him at all. I just water every once in a while, just kind of when I remember to and just clean his leaves to keep him like, you know, pest free and all that sort of stuff. But I love him because he just trails so nicely. I probably should, you know, tie him up in a trellis or something like that. But he's one of my favorites for sure. And he always has been since the start. Another favorite of mine, and this was a favorite since the very start of my plant hunting days, is my Satin Pothos, which is the short name for it. I know it's a Skindapsis, I'm not sure what kind. You just got such pretty leaves and they're so velvety and soft and then you get them in the sun and they're all shiny and pretty. But he has made a comeback from the dead basically because he was in just a little dark corner and he doesn't need a whole lot of light. But in my old house, he was just kind of just sitting wherever I put him and he grew a little bit but we just had some yellowing leaves situations while I was figuring out his watering schedule and I took him across states when I moved so he was in the bottom of my car and it got super cold and was snowing during our drive so he is only recently starting to pop out all this new growth as you can see he's got so many little new leaves coming in and he's getting kind of leggy but that's not a problem at all um, but I literally thought he was gonna die right after we moved into our new place, but he made a comeback and he's doing fantastic. The next plant that I got was actually another Skindapsis, and I think this is just the Skindapsis pictus, which is like one of the more common ones, but he's again got some super pretty, very big leaves, and I recently repotted him. I had him in a little four inch pot for a very long time, um, and kind of, kind of as long as I can really. I try not to repot my plants unless they really need it but I had him in a little four inch pot and he was, <laughs> the roots were literally busting out the bottom of the pot. So I knew he had to be repotted. So he recently got into a six inch pot and he's just doing great. Kind of in a, he's in a brighter spot, but like not a super bright spot. And he's still putting out all this new growth and just springing straight up. So he's great. And then this is my silver striped philodendron. And he's very similar to the Brazil that I showed you earlier but his stripes and his variegation are a bit more silvery and like creamish color. 
Um, he just barely started putting out a lot of new consistent growth and I've actually chopped him on this end because some of the growth he was putting out was looking more like a neon philodendron, which I have one of those and I'll show you that next. So I've chopped him and crop propagated him a bit just so I can fill out the pot because right now he's really lush and beautiful on this side, but like not very much so on this side. So we're trying to grow him back right now, but he's beautiful. I love him too. And he's starting to trail, which is fantastic. I love mining plants. So I'll show you what I did with the propagation that I took from here um, in the next plant. So this is my neon philodendron. Um, he started out as just like a little three or four leaf cutting as well. And now he's got all of these fantastic leaves on there. These two leaves on this side are from that silver stripe philodendron that I showed you. It's just um, the reverted bits that I just put back in here because it's been consistently putting it like putting out neon leaves. So I figured might as well fill out this pot more. Um, he's just really fun. I like him a lot. I'm scared I'm going to have to repot him soon because of how big it's getting. Um, but I'm gonna keep them in here as long as I can, so hopefully that's a long time. And the last of my old plants that I brought into my new place, so kind of like the original plants that I had, is my string of hearts. And I love this one so much. And he started out as one big six inch pot. Um, and once again, I separated him into three pots and then gave two of them away to my friends. But this, these are just so pretty. I'm gonna get out of here so you can see them, but they're just... This was one of my wish list plants for basically since I started collecting plants. So as you can see, there's some new growth along here just with these little vines. And that's from chopping it up and propagating it to kind of fill it out and get more vines going down the front of the pot. But he is one of my favorites for sure. And he grows like a weed. I've chopped him. I can't even count how many times I've chopped him in the past like year. Um, just because he grows so fast and it's just... Yeah, it, I can't control it usually. So it's really nice to have and they're just so pretty. They do like bright light, so you just have to keep them in a bit brighter of an area, but a windowsill usually is good enough. So we have lots of those. I have one more original plant that I forgot to show you because he's really, he's not really big, but he's bigger than most of my other plants. But let me grab him real quick. He is one of my favorites as well. He is my Ruby ficus tree. I think it's a Ruby rubber tree is like the actual term that people use. But he's so pretty. He's got these beautiful like purpley pink leaves and he hasn't been growing super fast right now because it's winter and because he's kind of overcoming the shock of the car ride that I took him in when I moved. Um, he was right in front of all the cold air and hot air that I was blasting through my AC when I was driving. So he's taken a bit of a beating, but he's starting to fill out a bit more and yeah, he's great. And he is fine with low light as well. He needs higher light if you want to bring out more of like the pink kind of color in there. But other than that, you really just need to wipe off his leaves because he does accumulate a lot of dust. So as long as you keep him dusted and watered, he's happy. So very low maintenance. I really don't do anything with these plants except for water them when I remember and dust their leaves every now and then. So very low maintenance, which I like. Okay, so now on to my newer plants that I have. I don't really remember what order I got all these in, but I have this Monstera adansonii. I'm not sure quite how to say it, but I'm sure you've seen it everywhere. It's just the really holy Monstera that likes to vine and is smaller and more compact than the Monstera deliciosa. And I have him in a vase of water because he got spider mites basically right when I got him. I think I bought him with spider mites and didn't notice. So instead of taking him out of his soil and changing the soil completely and risking spider mite eggs still being in there, I just took him out of the soil completely and put him in a vase of water and he's doing fine. Like he's still putting out new growth and everything. Um, and he's growing a lot of new roots. I don't know if you can see inside this kind of amber vase, but he's growing a lot of new roots, which is always a good sign. Um, but yeah, he's been happy in here, so I really haven't bothered to repot him or anything, so he's not my favorite plant out of all I've Like, obviously I still like him because he's a plant, but like, he's not my favorite for sure, just because I thought I would like monsters because everybody was going crazy for them, but I'm just kind of, they're just kind of okay. But, you know, we're happy with them. Speaking of Monsteras, the second plant I got when I moved to my new place was a Monstera Deliciosa, but this is the tiniest little baby one you will ever see. He's in a four inch pot, a very shallow four inch pot. He probably needs to be repotted soon. I don't know, I haven't checked the roots in a long time. But he's, he's fine. I don't really know how to take care of Monsteras. Um, 
He kind of gets medium light, not very much, but I, I hate how there's like this white vein in the middle. It always gives me hope that it's almost like variegated, but I'm pretty sure it's not. Obviously that'd be <laughs> insanely lucky, but um, he's doing great. He's fine. And I just, I bought him because he was so cute and small and stuff. Um, I really haven't bought any bigger monsters because I just don't, don't love them and I feel like if I buy them from when they're small and watch them grow and watch them get their first like fenestrated leaf then I would love them a lot more but he's cool he's cute so we like him right now because he's a small plant and we love small plants around here this next plant I got at the same time that I got that last monstera and it's just a regular Hartley philodendron in my little face pot um, and he was doing he wasn't growing very much uh, for the first couple months that I had him but he started to recently take off quite a bit like giving me like two new leaves a week um, which is insane because it's winter, so he shouldn't really be growing at all right now. But he's doing great, and yeah, I just, I really am a sucker for like leafy plant. Like all plants are leafy, but like, you know, just the big green leaves and just so cute. And like the vining, once again, I guess the vining got me because I just love vining plants and I can't wait for him to fill out. I'm probably going to propagate him soon, like this one, um, just to fill the pot out a bit more. And he might need repotting soon as well, just because the pot he's in is pretty shallow so just even a deeper four inch pot would probably be better but love him he's great kind of sad to show the next one because this is a recent casualty um people said it was like an easy plant to take care of it's my string of pearls it looks pretty sad um i just i watered him once and i thought he was thirsty because some of the pearls were wrinkled but now he's kind of dying so i've put him in the brightest spot of my house now and i hope he does better but if not, it was it's literally like the tiniest pot of string of pearls. So if not, it's not the biggest deal in the world. You know, you live and you learn. And it was kind of just during the time where I was kind of forgetting about a lot of my plants and just the plants that couldn't be neglected. So I guess he can't be neglected very much. Um, didn't do very well. So not all plants live, but hopefully he makes a comeback because there is like new growth and stuff on some of the vines. So hopefully just like, you know, one or two of the vines survive, but Overall, he's not doing so hot, which is sad, but it is what it is. Another plant I got recently, which I swore I would never get into because variegated plants are nice, but not every single one is like, ooh, that's fantastic. And the Marble Queen Pothos was definitely one of those. Um, I don't even know if it's called a Marble Queen, maybe it's just Marble Pothos. But I always was like, oh yeah, the leaves are fun, but they're not like really my cup of tea. They just look a bit too weird and stuff. But then this one, is gorgeous i love this one he's just so nice and he's not too variegated there's still like lots of green in him um he's definitely small i can't wait till he starts vining though i'm literally so excited for that um and it will just be fun to see and he's he's doing great like i haven't done anything with him at all i've watered him maybe once since i got him and he's thriving he's doing great so we just kind of keep him in the darker area of the like medium light place so He's doing great there. We'll keep him there. The next one that I got that recently started taking off is this watermelon peperomia. And I'm gonna show you just all the new growth that's in there. Just so much new growth. And this is actually, if you can tell by the leaves, a variegated watermelon peperomia that I just found by chance at a nursery. So very fun there. Um, he's just so cute. I like him. I like peperomias too, cause they just really grow quickly and don't take a whole lot. Um, I know I'm doing something wrong because the leaves are kind of curled, but he's still putting out new growth and I've checked his roots and they're totally fine. So I don't know what it is and it might just be an adjustment thing. He might just be adjusting to the new space, but he's doing great as far as growing and his roots are rotted. So we love him. He's great. Another one of my favorite plants that I had before, I had a little tiny four inch one, but I recently got one of those big Costco ones that they had for like $20 is my Begonia Maculata, if that's how you say it. Just this polka dot Begonia. You can see he just recently put out a new leaf right there. And I love, the new leaves are just so pretty. And so are the old ones, obviously. He was a bit banged up when I got him just because Costco is not the best place to store houseplants. Um, but he's making a great recovery. He's got a couple more leaves coming in. They should be coming in with the next, like within the next few couple weeks but he's just so pretty and he's so easy. Um, he does require higher humidity than the rest of my plants, but I kind of just keep him where the rest of my plants are anyways, and he does just fine. So almost forgot to show you a couple of my favorite ones. I have only like a couple duplicates of plants and one is the philodendron birkin. This one's in a four inch pot. 
Um, I just put the nursery pots inside bigger pots. So it is what it is. But this is, I bought him as a baby and he didn't have any stripes. Now he's got new stripes and putting out new leaves with tons of stripes on them. Um, so it's super exciting. I love him. He's very easy. And I just like how the foliage kind of spreads out was like what I liked about this plant. He is a bit annoying with his leaves. Like he's got, I don't know if you can see, but he's got that leaf right there. That's just all crooked and all bent out of place right there that I had to take out of the, <laughs> of the sheath. Um, so now he's looking very janky right there, but he's still growing and we love it. The next Birkin that I got was from Lowe's as well. And he was much more variegated and even had this half reverted leaf. Um, if you don't know, Birkins revert back to, I think it's Rojo Congo or Red Congo. Um, and that's what that variegation is right there. But he's super pretty and just had so much variegation. And he was even cheaper than the smaller Birkin that I have. So I couldn't pass on him and he's just doing great. Um, I do find that he's a bit more fussy than the smaller one, which is interesting, but I don't know why that is. This is slowly but surely becoming just a philodendron walkthrough video. But another philodendron that I have is, I think it's called a Macaulay's Finale. Um, and he was on the struggle bus when I first got him, but he's finally starting to grow. He's got a new leaf coming in right here. Um, but he's got these pretty like orange leaves and it's not like Prince of Orange philodendron type orange leaves. It's kind of more of a cinnamon colored leaf. Um, and yeah, he's really pretty. As you can see, I've had to chop a lot off leaves. Um, of him, but I think it's because he's potted in too big of a pot and but like that's the size that I got him in So I think I need to downsize his pot pretty soon um, Because I took a look at his roots and his root system is so small So I'll probably repot him soon to see if that helps, but he's been making a bit of a comeback So we might just leave him I'm not sure one of my more recent purchases was a bigger plant because I always want bigger plants in my house but it was this other philodendron it's a Burl Marks, um, not a variegated Burl Marks because I don't really like those very much, but he's just a big, as you can see, kind of bigger than my head, but just a big Burl Marks. I love the leaves. It just kind of is a bit of a jungly feel, you know? He's got lots of new growth coming in, um, which is great. I do have to kind of look around for spiders, but kind of like keeping them in there because they take care of all the other pests that might come around. Um, but I just dust his leaves, keep them there. And I haven't watered him since I got him because he's in such a big pot and he's doing fine. He doesn't seem like he needs water even. Another one of my most recent purchases, which is a bit more of a branching out type thing for me. I usually don't like colored plants or plants that like flower a ton. Um, but this one, I just, I loved. It was, you know, love at first sight, that, sort of, <laughs> that whole sort of stuff. But it's this Oxalis triangularis, if I said that anywhere near correctly. Um, but he's this purple shamrock. He opens and closes his leaves like they open in the morning with the sun and they close at night. So it's super cool. Um, and he's super easy to take care of. You can literally chop them all down and he'll grow back within like the next week. He's super easy. Um, he does move around with the light a lot. So you can tell like this bit has been in front of the window like with the light a lot. But then like the back bit hasn't like hardly at all today. So he's a bit lopsided at the moment but just rotate him every so often. And he puts out these little cute flowers all the time. So it's fun. He's great. We love him. We're coming down to the wire right now, but I only have a couple more. Okay, the last three are my most recent purchases and probably some of my most favorite purchases of all time. The first one is a string of turtles. It's another Peperomia and I got him from a local seller and I wasn't, everybody was freaking out about string of turtles like a while ago. Um, and I wasn't super like, oh my gosh, I need one. But then I saw that this girl had one for sale and I was like, okay, yeah, I need to have it. Um, and he's just so cute. Once again, I think it's cause he's trailing. Um, I just sucker for trailing plants, but I got him for a really good price too. So it's a win-win. The next plant that I got is one of my dream plants since I literally started collecting plants and that is a Mykins. Um, this Mykins is pretty sparse right now. His pot is. Um, I just need to fill him up because he's not got a lot of like sprouts coming out. But I chopped him up quite a bit. I chopped him here and I chopped him here and he's already starting to grow back new like shoots out of those spots that I cut. Um, and the cuttings that I put in water are already starting to grow new roots and it's literally been like three days. 
So I'm super excited because he seems like he grows really fast and I love fast growing plants, but he's definitely one of my favorites and well worth the wait for sure. Okay, last but not least, but probably the smallest is a variegated string of hearts. I'm gonna get this real close to the camera so you can see him, but he's so cute. He's got the tiniest little shoots right now. He's got a couple of leaves propagating in there. Um, but I also got this one from a local seller for a really good price once again. Um, and I was worried about killing him because everybody has a hard time with variegated string of hearts. It seems like even if they like are fine with normal string of hearts, he started putting out the tiniest new leaf. And I'm so excited because it means that he's happy and he's growing. And I'm just, I'm so excited. He's going to be so pretty when he gets nice and long. And like I said, the other string of hearts is one of my favorites. So I'm so happy to have these two just right there next to each other together. And of course, there's always my propagation station where I chop up so many plants and start rooting them right there. I'm also, you know, experimenting with some avocado pits, seeing what's the best way to sprout them. I've done it before, but this is just, you know, some experimentations. Um, and then, you know, some starter plants on there too, just to grow and to give people. So that's the tour of my house plants. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, if you did, please give me a follow and please thumbs up this video. Um, I'm probably gonna come out with quite a lot more videos just because I like talking about plants so much. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. And thanks for watching guys. I really appreciate it. See you later.